Well, g'day, it's Sam here from Muty Magic, back with another video. This one is an exciting one, not only because uh, it is uh, opening up an awesome product right here, but also because we're going to be talking about uh, Core Set 2019. It is coming out next weekend, or this weekend. It's coming out really soon with the pre-release, and uh, I'm kind of giving you a, a quick, short uh, pre-release guide, just a couple of tips to think about. Nothing too fancy, nothing as fancy as the other channels that you might see, uh, but I'm going to quickly just go through a couple of things. First thing, before you go to a pre-release, uh, you need to make sure you have a look at the cards. Uh, you don't want to spend a huge amount of your time having to read every single card that you pull, so my number one tip uh, is to know the cards. Now, it's really easy for us to think, okay, well, I need to know what the rares are, what are the bombs, what are the things that I can pull? Uh, but don't worry about that, because in terms of rares, you're probably only gonna have, thir uh, you're only gonna have seven rares. That's the most likely number you're gonna have is seven rares. How many uncommons, how many commons? You're gonna have a heck of a lot more than that, okay? So the most important thing is to know what the commons are. Know what is a good common, know what's a good uncommon, so that when you see them, you can start thinking, okay, what decks can I build around this? Because your rares, yes, they're bombs, yes, they're important, but the base of your deck is those commons and uncommons. Uh, so that's what my number one tip is, to really first check what the cards are, have a read through so you don't waste a whole lot of time reading them at the pre-release. Uh, the other thing you can do, very important, uh, is bring sleeves or purchase sleeves when you get there. If you can have sleeves for pre-release, it just helps because uh, not only could you pull a really good card, you might have something that you want to have sleeves straight away, but also it helps you play. It helps you play a lot better, a lot smoother. Uh, it's much easier to deal with the cards when they are sleeved. Now I know there are some channels out there that will tell you to sleeve, pre-sleeve some lands. It is a decent tip if you're getting really serious about it. If you pre-sleeve, say 10 to 15 uh, of every single land, just in case you go mono-colored, you never know, uh, pre-sleeve them, then you're saving yourself some time when you're actually planning your deck build. So it is an idea if you want to go into that. But we're going to get into the opening of this pack, and we're going to try and do this in a way that we don't reveal too much. Okay, and I'm going to show you kind of what I would do uh, if this were a pre-lease kit. Okay, so they're going to leave this to the side. I'm going to leave this way up in the corner so you guys can see it, but it's not in the way. All right, so you're going to have six packs, basically. You're going to have six packs. You're going to have a promo rare. You're going to have a box, and in the box, you're also going to have some sort of dice, okay? Now, this is a really good dice. It's going to land on 20 for me. See? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it didn't even do it still. Um, so you're going to get six packs. You're going to get a dice. You're going to get a pre-release promo foil. Uh, so what I do is when I'm going through, I'm going to put these over to the side. You're going to crack into a pack, and I like to split them up straight away, okay? So I'm going to show you what this looks like. It might take a little bit of time. Bear with me, but you do get to watch the whole opening as well. I'll talk about some of the cards, and uh, I'll also be splitting them up as we do this, okay? So uh, what I like to do is at the top, I'll put them in their colors in creatures. And then down the bottom, I'll put them in as instants and sorceries and all the other things, okay? So we're going to take... Uh, we're going to make white over here, we're going to put red here, so that's a instant, instant, uh, green creature, black creature, blue instant, and then I'll have the other stuff, the colorless stuff over there. So then I'm just going white creature, blue creature, and so on. Now normally I would spread these out so I can see them all, but I'm trying to do this, it's on camera. Okay, we've got a colorless creature. Uh, red creature. Okay, so at the moment it's actually really, really even. There's nothing really standing out. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm also keeping note of some things. Seal away, excellent white card. So, so far I've got a really good white uh, removal, I've got a really good white common, um, really good green creature, and then a land. Okay, so that's the start. Oh, and a foil land as well. There you go. Let's just put that to the side for later. Alright, so that's how it works. So basically I'm going to do that through the whole thing, and um, yeah, going through the whole thing and then you evaluate once you've finished uh, splitting it all up into those packs, uh, into those piles. Uh, let's just try and...
All right, so I've split them up into some piles. Sorry, they're a bit messy. It's a bit hard to do that with the camera in front of me. And just really quickly, you want to have a look through and see how many creatures you've got. So uh, I like to order them according to their mana cost as well. So you've got, um, you know, you want to make sure you've got your curve all sorted really nicely. Okay, so you've got a couple of two drops. You've got a few three drops. So in white, you're not looking too bad. I mean, two Banash Honor Guards, Pegasus Corsair, Danitha, they're all good cards. Uh, that's a decent amount of creatures. Uh, so often I look at it and try and find a combination where you can actually do it with only a couple of uh, a couple of colors. So this one was interesting. Got two two headed giants, um, and you know you got four mana cost, one mana cost, two mana cost. Uh, so you want to try and yeah get that curve really nice um, and make sure that they're also good cards. You don't just want to go oh this is a good curve so I'm going to go with it. Okay, so that's. That's a good card in one, uh, it's not too bad in one, that's a really good in two, really good in two, not so great in two, and then that's terrible in two when it comes down to it. Uh, so that's a fair few red creatures as well. So you want to have a look at those things, but the main thing you want to look at after this is what removal you've got in those colors as well. And that's really going to tell you where you want to be because ideally you're not going to play a game without removal. Okay, so there's some really high amount of creatures here actually, and you can um, kick the Crows and Druid. So uh, green is looking good in terms of wanting to ramp, but ramping spells, not a whole lot. Um, all right, going through, sorting all these. Like that. All right, so that's a good curve. Two, two, two. Oh, so that's four two mana spells and a three mana and then a few four mana. Yeah, that's that's not too bad with black. Then we've got not a whole lot happening in blue. So already we're looking at that going, okay, blue's probably not our ideal location to be because we've only got six creatures and they're not bombs, okay? So that's probably not ideal. Um, let's have a look at what cards we've got with it. So. Instantly I'm looking at this going, okay, so there's a blink of an eye. There's not a whole lot going for me in blue. And I'm going to move that out of the way because we don't really have a whole lot in blue at all. There's nothing that's going to draw me to blue. So let's leave blue out. Uh, what have we got in black? We've got Eviscerate is very good. We've got Vicious Offerings, very good. And we've got Cast Downs, good. Fungal Infections, good. So we've got four really good removal spells in black. Uh, this is looking very, very nice. I'm thinking black is very strong, okay? So I'm going to keep this to the side. But basically, if I were making a black deck, these four cards instantly go in it, okay? No thought about it. They're in there because that's really good removal. So I'm thinking there's four there. There's four two-mana creatures. Now, two-mana is where you want to be. Two-mana and three-mana creatures are ideal, okay? So if you've got four two-mana creatures, now, Rat Colony is not so great. Um, but four two-mana creatures, and then you've got a good ramp up from there. This is looking very, very strong, okay? Then in green, we had, that's a decent removal spell, not so flash, good little trick, good sideboard card, Song of Freilis is an excellent card, Sapperling Migration. Now, here's the thing, I stuffed this up. Sapperling Migration, I said sorcery and looked at it and went, yeah, let's put it in here. Sorceries that create tokens should be in the creature pile, okay? They're very good in the creature pile. All right, so Grow From The Ashes, like this is looking not too bad. That's a fun card, that's good removal. Um, Grow From The Ashes, it shrinks your deck, it also gets you the cards that you need to get into bigger creatures, so that's looking good as well. And so strong, so far green and black are looking strong, especially when you consider Slimefoot sitting right here. And we've got quite a few, well, we've got a few different ways of getting Sapperlings, so, and uses for Sapperlings, so that's looking good. Uh, red, removal-wise, we've got, uh, yeah, Radiating Fire, Oh, lightning, sorry, and Shiv and Fire. Uh, yeah, it's looking okay. Not as strong as you'd want red to be normally. Um, and then in white, white wasn't too bad either. Triumph of Gerard is a fun card, really good. Invoke the Divine is very good in sideboards. Oh, actually, you'd probably mainboard it in this format. Call the Cavalry, again, this should be a creature card. It's excellent as a creature. And seal away. So, so far I'm looking at it thinking that black and green are my best bets in terms of playability. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably end up making a deck out of this. But um, yeah, really quickly, that's the idea. You want to go through, you want to look for removal, you want to make sure you've got a good amount of creatures, and then try and put the deck together from there. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously, 
there's some cards that you want to have in there. If you went to three colors, Skittering Surveyor is really good. You get an extra land as you play it. Um, and then, obviously, Slimefoot's really good. The other card that I noticed was excellent in this pack is this one, Icy Manipulator. This card shuts down enemies, okay? I played a game recently where I had a, a green-white deck. I had six lands on the battlefield. One of them was a planes. My opponent tapped out my planes every single turn, so I couldn't use it. My whole hand was white, and so I couldn't play anything the entire game. It just destroyed. One card destroyed me completely. So this is always going in the deck. Um, and then you've got a couple other ones there that are interesting. That also plays with our black-green deck. I'm going to make a deck out of this and show you that later. Um, but for now, that is uh, those are my tips. Uh, you want to make sure you've got approximately 15 creatures, 8 spells, but that can change depending on what they are, as well as uh, 17 land. Now, I often actually play 16 land. I haven't had any issues playing 16 land my entire time doing these, so that's what I would probably consider doing as well. All right, uh, I'm sure everyone is wondering, what were my two cards over here? Because that may change things. We're going to have a look at what these cards are. We have got a Fall of the Thran is, uh, is one of our foils. This is our foil rare because it's not a legendary. And our legendary foil is Grun the Lonely King. Okay, cool. We might as well open it, have a quick look, um, and then move on. So there, there's some nice cards. I always like appreciating, well, I appreciate getting these foil rares every single time. Um, but yeah, that's my little tips for how to do your pre-release. Spread them out like that. Put your creatures at the top, your spells down the bottom. Look for removal. Make sure you know the commons and the uncommons. And then yeah, build a deck. And the main thing with pre-release is have fun. All right, that's the whole reason we do what we do. Have fun. Uh, that's the whole purpose and you know you might pull something crazy you might not but as long as you have fun with your friends then uh, it's all worth it so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and i hope to see you at another video very soon